You know that scene in Titanic right after they hit the iceberg when the people on the ship are like totally cool, like the little kids are playing with the big ice chunks on the deck playing soccer with it, but the captain's kind of panicking. That's what's going on right now for me with the Montreal Canadiens. Before we get started on this, I like to say it's super early in the season. I like to judge teams on a 10-game interval. I think that 20 games into the season, you really have a good idea of where you're at. Everybody says that. I think it's you know, a pretty safe uh, measuring stick. But that being said, I think the Montreal Canadiens are suffering from something that I like to call rangeritis. That's right. They're suffering from rangeritis. They have the same exact problem the New York Rangers have. The New York Rangers are the most, bar none, overrated team in the National Hockey League this year. All the hockey pundits put them up here, and the New York Rangers are a little bit to a lot of it lower than that. They are just not that good of a team right now. And I say this with a lot of love for both franchises. You know, there's, there's no axe to grind here. The Rangers are exactly like the Montreal Canadiens, wherein they have an outstanding world-class goaltender, a really smart, top-of-his-game coach, and not a lot in between. They're like an Oreo cookie without the cream. Do you see the fine folks over at Nabisco selling Oreo cookies without the cream in the middle? No. Why? It wouldn't sell. It's not good. I think they actually did do that for a little while, but they stopped. Backing up my point further, you need stuff in between. Both the Canadians and the Rangers just don't have it. They just don't have it. Rick Nash is a former shell of himself. Mika Zibanejad is the only bright spot on this team right now. You've got uh, Matt Zugrello, who I will forever love. But you have David DeHarnay, who's a third-line center at best. Chris Kreider. Is he there? Is he not there? He's going to be a streaky player. He's not showing up right now. And then you have JT Miller, Jimmy VC, Kevin Hayes, Jesper Faust, Michael Grabner. That is five players that are, in fact, actually just one player. They are the exact same player. Are these guys 10 goal scorers or are these guys 25 goal scorers? We just don't know. I'm not saying they're going to be bad. I'm just saying they're overrated. You take a look at everybody who's made hockey predictions. The Rangers are in the playoffs. I don't think they get in, and I don't think that they, if they do, that they get in so easy. I think they're a struggle. I think they're a wild card team at the very best. You take a look at the Montreal Canadiens, and they are in the exact same boat. They're in the same boat. Max Pacioretty, Jonathan Drouin, these are great guys. Uh, Arturi Lekkinen, all right. Thomas Plakanik, he's struggled. Brendan Gallagher, never really got up to where I thought he would be. Alex Galchenyuk is on the fourth line. That tells you all you need to know. Philip uh, Daniel and Charles Houdin, and these guys are figuring it out. Tori Mitchell, by the way, back in the lineup tonight. Uh, Andrew Shaw, I love forever. F- phenomenal third-line player. Goal scorer, tough guy, love his game. Uh, you're never going to hear a complaint about me out of uh, Andrew Shaw. They got a great defense. Shea Weber's the man. Everybody knows that. Uh, this Victor Mete, Mete, I think they say his name, young kid. If he can play with number six, great. Carl Alsner, not as advertised, slow. And uh, by the way, Joe Morrow moves into the back end of the defense, which brings me to my other point. With the uh, Montreal Canadiens here, they just uh, terminated the contract, as you see here, courtesy of NHL.com, just terminated the contract of uh, Mark Strike. They just signed him in July. They signed Strider in July, and already he's gone. They mo- Both sides mutually agreed, this ain't working, let's go. Um, that's how desperate the Canadians were to get some puck-moving defense. They were like, let's give Mark Stride a try because he was phenomenal at moving the puck out of his own end when he was 32. Uh, I guess he can't do it anymore at 39 and nothing against him. I love Mark Stride. I think he's a phenomenal defenseman. I thought the height of his career came with the New York Islanders. 
Um, not so great in Philadelphia. And as we can see here, he's 39 years old. So he goes. But, you know, that's how desperate the Canadians are. They had Mark Streit on the depth chart and he just couldn't make it into the team. But this team doesn't have anybody outside of Shea Weber. And Mete is an unproven commodity right now that can really move the puck out of their own end. And Alex Galchenyuk is on the fourth line. And, you know, where's Brendan Gallagher going to be this season? You know, where is Pacioretty going to be? Where is Placanic going to be? You know, this is like a super unproven team. This is a team that is in a lot of trouble and a lot more trouble than other people think. And the reason why I'm so down on them, the reason why, again, I like to wait, judge a team in a 10 game interval. But the reason why, I wanted to bring this up now on the hockey talk show here is because they're in the East, just like the Rangers Rangers in the Metro Montreal in the Atlantic. And if you want to come out of those teams, if you want to have success, if you want to compete for a Stanley cup, there's only a few roads out of those areas and they go through Pittsburgh and they go through Washington and they go through Columbus and they go through Tampa and they go through Toronto. And I'm sorry, but to me, Toronto has so much more upside than the Canadians do, so much more upside than the Rangers do. Yet, if you look at all the pundits, nobody's picking the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here's something that's driving me crazy, and I see this a lot. This is a great question. All the hockey shows like to talk about this stuff. And it's not a bad question. If you were starting a team right now, would you select Crosby? Or McDavid. That's their big, like, Crosby or McDavid. And if they add a third person into the mix, it's Patrick Laine in Winnipeg. Now, nothing against Patrick Laine. He's a fine player. But Austin Matthews! Where's my Austin Matthews love? Why is nobody giving Austin Matthews love? Now, I get it. The Toronto Maple Leafs are kind of a similar team to the Rangers and the Canadians in this. Uh, They have a a great head coach. Babcock's a phenomenal head coach. They have a good goaltender. Frederick Anderson is no Carey Price. He's no, you know, in fact, he's third on the list if we're going to put these three teams together. But the difference between these teams is Austin Matthews. They have a surefire goal scorer. They got guys who could put the puck in the net. They got guys on the back end that could at least move the puck out of their zone. Gardner's had a uh, comeback year. You know, Gardner's been good for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I've liked his game. You know, he's not super noticeable up at the start here, but he's, he's got some chops. Morgan Riley. I love the way the guy moves the puck. Ron Hainsey's got some speed even at his age. But Austin Matthews, James Van Riemsdyk, Patrick Marlowe's got five points in five games. These guys can score. They're proven that they can score. All right, so their defense isn't all that great. So they give up a lot of goals. Look at their numbers compared to Montreal's. Nobody on Montreal has more than one goal in five games. Look at the multiple point getters, multiple goal scorers here. Kadre, Zaitsev, Marlowe, Van Riemsdyk, Matthews, all, all more than one goal. Dominic Moore's got two goals. Zach Hyman's got two goals. Nobody even knows who he is, including Lou Lamorello. No I'm kidding. Zach Hyman's a fine player. I don't know why Austin Matthews doesn't get included in this conversation. It drives me nuts. If I was starting a team right now, would I pick Austin Matthews over Connor McDavid? You know what? I don't know. But damn it, he should be in the conversation. He's a dynamic player. Why? Just because he doesn't have the speed of Connor McDavid? Just because he doesn't have the, you know, passing pizzazz of Sidney Crosby? Write that down. If I ever record an album, I want to call it Passing Pizzazz. You know? Yeah, in those areas, he falls short, but... If I'm starting a team, I'm going to get a good long look at uh, Connor uh, Austin Matthews. I'll love his game. 
I love him with uh, Marlo. And I love him with Van Riemsdyk. And you got Kadri in there who's come around. Found his role. William Nylander, Mitch Marner, the younger guys. You know, the thing is, is their question marks are far and few between. Mitch Marner and William Nylander in the question marky role. I'll take them any day over Jesper Faust and JT Miller. And I like those guys. They're great players. But the thing is, is there's six of them that are the same player for the Rangers. I don't know what they're going to become. And, you know, the thing with Montreal is it's the it's, you know, a similar circumstance. Like, I just I just don't know what the Canadians are going to become. Um, especially, you know, when they're in a scenario where, you know, we don't know where they're going to be at. So, you know, if we take a look here at, um, the statistics from last season, Patch already had a good year, 35 goals. You're going to like that. Radulov's not with them anymore. Galchenyuk at 17 is underachieving. Paul Byron at 20. It's good for him. Shea Weber, 17 goals. Philip Dane. Is it Philip Deneau? I think it's Deneau. 13 goals. Uh, Shaw, 12. He should be a 15 goal scorer at least. Look at Bukanic, 10 goals. Jeez. Gallagher, 10 goals. I mean, these are, you know, these are, these are bad. Blakanic, Gallagher, Galchenyuk. You know, the other thing too with this is Galchenyuk gets a lot of flack. But what about Gallagher? What about Blakanic? Where's the flack for these guys? And on top of that, you got a really slow defensive core that outside of Shea Weber and this new Mete kid that we don't really know what he is, but he's got a great upside. Where are they going to be at? Uh, it's panic time for the Montreal Canadiens. And I know what you're saying. It's five games in, and you're breaking your rule of 10 games and blah, 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 blah. Man, the kids are playing with the ice chunks on the deck of the uh, SS Montreal Canadien. <laughs> they are. They are. I don't see this bright side coming whatsoever. Man, I just don't see it. You know, other teams, you know that are struggling out of the gate right now. I think Buffalo is going to be a little bit better, but not much. You know, I think Carolina is a little bit more improved, but not much. Boston, Florida, the Islanders, I think they're all going to be a little bit stronger than they are now. Uh, you know, you look at Arizona at one and three, Edmonton at one and three. These teams are built to turn it around and they're going to be just fine. I don't know if they're going to be uh, in the Stanley Cup Finals, Arizona and uh, I mean uh, San Jose and Edmonton, but um, they're going to be in the mix. I don't see the upside to the Montreal Canadiens. I don't see it. And just as I take on a whole bunch of flack for when I say things like the Rangers should be trading Henrik Lundqvist, look, I'm not saying you go trade uh, away Carey Price. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is when you're in that division, when you're in the East. You got to go through Pittsburgh. You have to go through Columbus. You have to go through Washington. You have to make it through Tampa Bay. And if you're not going to do that, then what the hell are you competing for? Look good in the standings? I say trade Lundqvist and I catch a lot of flack about it, but you know what? You're wasting the next three years of that guy's career if you leave him on this team because there's no way the Rangers are making it past what They have it worse than Montreal. There's no way the Rangers with this team making it past Pittsburgh, Columbus, and Washington, or whoever else they have to go through to get to the Eastern Conference Finals and the Stanley Cup Finals. They're not doing it. You are wasting Henrik Lundqvist's career. And the Canadians are not that much farther away because you have Carey Price and what else do you have outside of a brilliant coach in Claude Julien? What else do you have? I'd love to know. You have Shea Weber. Cool. Nobody else really that can offensively help your back end. You have uh, Max Pacioretty. Cool. He's not going to lift the whole team on his own. Where's Gallagher? Where's Galchenyuk? You know, where are these guys? I like Druin. I like the addition of Druin. I think that's a good move. 
but they just don't have it. To me, I look at that team and I see a Toronto Maple Leaf team that's frankly better. And I'm not just saying that because the Maple Leafs won the other night. They're just better. They're just a better team. They have more offense and they have a goalie that's not as good as Carey Price, certainly. But he's good enough to overcome their short side, which is their uh, lack of defense on the back end. Toronto going to give up a lot of goals this year. They're just going to do it. They're going to win a lot of games six to four, you know, five to three. They're not going to be in a lot of two, one games, one, nothing games. They're going to be in five, three, six, four games, the Toronto Maple Leafs. But yeah, that's an exciting brand of hockey. I have no problem with that as long as they get the results. And I think they will. I just don't see it in the Montreal Canadiens, man. I don't see it. I think it's time to panic. The Canadians already have, by the way, not to say that they're panicking, but they are definitely looking to uh, mix some things up. As I said, uh, Claude Julien already is uh, looking to alter the lineup already. Uh, he's bringing in, uh, he's sitting Jordy Ben, and uh, he's going to bring in uh, Tory Mitchell, and he is going to uh, uh, make a move to uh, bring in uh, Joe Morrow. Here is uh, Claude Julien when asked about playing uh, Joe Morrow in the lineup. Just uh, we needed to make a change there. So, uh, you know, Benny's going to take a break. Uh, he's been uh, fighting it a little bit. And so uh, it's a chance for uh, Joe to come in and, uh, and do the job here for us. It's got to be encouraging to see to what extent Davidson has kind of, I guess, moved up in, in his standing or, or improved his game since, since training camp. And, and I suppose when you make a decision to put a guy in like Morrow, you're hoping for the same sort of result? I think so, but I think uh, in, in Davey's case, you know, uh, we saw what he could do last year. He was solid, and he just had a, a tough camp as well, And uh, but he's, you know, getting closer to what he was. And uh, same thing with Joe. Joe didn't have a, the greatest camp either and uh, trying to do a little too much, but there's still some uh, qualities there that we could use tonight if, if they're used properly. The fact Mitchell played All right, so let me translate that for you here because uh, – this is Claude Julien, and it's tough to answer these questions, especially in a, a hockey market like Montreal. They're literally putting a player into the lineup tonight that they hope will spark something on their back end that wasn't good enough to be in this lineup or make this team five games ago. Um, that is the calmest form of panic that you can have. That is literally, what can I do... How do we spark something with this team? Let me put Joe Morrow in because he's got the good, and he said it, he's got the good qualities. You know, he didn't make the team, but he's got the good qualities. <sighs> you better hope he makes that first pass coming out of the back end because that's what they're hoping he does. You know, Claude Julian is hoping that Joe Morrow could be that answer. I don't know, man. You terminate the contract of uh, Mark Streit, and two days later you got Joe Morrow in the uh, mix. You're shuffling up your lineup. I don't know. I don't know. You got to worry. If you're the Montreal Canadiens, you got to worry. And here's the thing to keep in mind. And I give credit to, uh, uh, well, I give credit to Ray Shiro a little bit, but I give credit to Jim Rutherford. When you look at the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are arguably one of the best teams in the league, certainly one of the better teams in the East, their supporting cast is outstanding. Shiri, Gensel, all these guys. You know, Phil Kessel. I mean, look at the, the supporting cast is so important. The players that make under three, two, you know, in some cases, some of these guys are making one and a half million. Those guys become super, super important to your franchise. And when I look up and down the starting lineups, by the way, the Claude Julian clip courtesy of NHL.com, we thank them for that. When I look up and down these lineups, Where's the supporting cast here? I see Andrew Shaw as a quality player. Dino, okay. Where are these guys? Where are these guys been? Galchenyuk's on the fourth line, by the way. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't like it. I don't like it. If I'm the Montreal Canadiens, I ain't sleeping well. From the New York Rangers, who are these guys? Right? Who are these guys? What are they? They don't know yet. And they're still waiting to find out. 
They are literally like the captain of the ship. Give me a uh, give me a damage report. They're waiting for the damage report. Five games in, and the New York Rangers are sitting at the bottom of the East. The Rangers are sitting right now at one and five. Uh, they have a worse record technically than the Sabres who have at least gotten to an overtime game and lost. The New York Rangers are going to struggle out of the gate and Montreal Canadiens are going to be right behind them unless they figure out something and they figure out something quick. And I don't foresee how. Did I get uh, I'm gonna figure out a way to get that Matt Duchesne out of uh, Colorado? And by the way, can we stop with the Matt Duchesne is going to Pittsburgh things? I just stop it. As sickening as it is, I checked uh, capfriendly.com and I think they actually can pull off the deal from a salary cap standpoint. If Colorado wants to eat four million of his deal, at least, uh, which I don't really see them doing. Uh, but I don't know if Pittsburgh really has the assets to go out and acquire him. I just don't. Uh, I don't know if Montreal does either, because that Mete is going to be one of the guys that uh, Joe Sackick wants. He's asking for an insane amount of money, but uh, if anybody's ever tried to buy a house before, you know there are no rules with these things. You set a price, and you don't have to move until you feel like it. And by the way, Colorado is at 4-2 and two right now. They're doing damn good. Neil Yakupov is sitting there like, please, dear God, don't trade this guy. I love him. In fact, I think he's sending over chocolate strawberries and whatever else he can over to Joe Sackick's house to try and do whatever he can to get him to stay. You're six games into the season and you still have Matt Duchesne on your uh, roster. The appeal, the desire to trade him gets smaller and smaller. And until uh, Duchesne says, well, now I'm not coming to the rink. I don't know if that really changes all that much for them. He might be in it for the long haul with Colorado, which is insane to think about. But, you know, it is what it is. Until Matt Duchesne gets fed up enough to say, I'm not putting skates on, I don't know if that's really going to change the situation because nobody's meeting Sackick's price. So if you're the New York Rangers or you're the Montreal Canadiens, you better think about ponying up. But um, I don't know how appealing and Alex Galchenyuk is going to be for Colorado. And I certainly don't know what on God's green earth the New York Rangers are going to offer the uh, Colorado Avalanche other than a couple of firstborns to pry him away because they can certainly use a good top line center because they don't have one. And it's a shame because Mika Zibinijad is one hell of a player, one hell of a player. But the Rangers have a whole slew of problems. But it goes back to what I said. You've got to go through these teams. You've got to go through Pittsburgh. You've got to go through Tampa. And both of these teams are not built to do that right now. I mean, I don't know if Carey Price can carry you through a whole year and a whole playoff round and still beat the Tampa Bay Lightning. Same for Henrik Lundqvist. And can they still beat the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins or the Columbus Blue Jackets or whoever's going to be there on that end. I don't know, man. I just don't know. And don't count out the Toronto Maple Leafs because offense is a big part of this league now. If you can score, a lot of teams struggle. Rangers and the Montreal Canadiens are just a few. And uh, good on the Toronto Maple Leafs for being able to uh, make that happen and uh, put the puck in the net. Get the puck out of their own end. They just got to tighten themselves up defensively a little bit and the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be real dangerous. Real, real dangerous. All right, that's a Hockey Talk Show quick hit. I'll see you on the next shift. Keep in mind, if you are listening to this on a uh, podcast, whether it's iTunes or Stitcher or the TuneIn Radio app, uh, know that the uh, show is shot with visuals on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we also have Facebook and YouTube live. So you're going to want to not only like our pages or subscribe, but you're going to want to get the notifications by following on Facebook and hitting the bell on YouTube to make sure you know when we go live so you can call into the show. 
and contribute. And if you're listening on a podcast, make sure you rate and review the show. Let me know what you think in the description below, of course, about what we talked about. Canadians fans, I know you're going to be active on this one. Uh, we did a lot of all, uh, we did a lot on the Canadians today, did a lot on the Canadians today. So I know you guys are going to be active. And of course, if you're listening on social media anywhere, we are at hockey talk show. That's at hockey talk show. That's how you can uh, get in touch with us via social media at hockey talk show, or it all stems from hockey talk show.com. That's hockey talk show.com. Make sure you share and spread the word, get people to like the page. We're trying to build a hockey community here where we can all come when news breaks or when things are happening, call into the show, interact, tweet, comment, and just keep the hockey talk alive. <laughs>